Hello, my friend. How are you today? Um, let's work on this one. This will be a fun one. Um, there's a boat moving in this one. I'll show you shortly. So I'll say turn on ghost reduction. Picks a middle one. Fine. Medium. Fine. Alignment. Fine. Create HDR. Okay. So um, let's go show you the originals here. Okay. I took this immediately after arriving on the scene, okay? This is on the way back. This is like my final shot before I went home after my long, tempestuous day of shooting. <laughs> um, I started out right across the way there on Jack's Point. See where all those clouds are? And it was absolutely pouring, and I did nothing over there. I wasted about three hours. That's okay. Then I drove over to this side of the lake and went way past here, about an hour deeper into Glenarchy, and worked on some of the shots that you've seen over the past few days. And while we're back, I got this, and I just love the way these clouds are all huddled around the mountain. I think this will make a great HDR. Now, I'm going to edit this one in Aurora, but this would turn out fine in Photomatics um, as well, especially because when you have uh, texture from the bottom all the way to the top, it just comes out really nice. And obviously, uh, the boat is moving between the shots, okay? That's what boats do. They move around. They move around, right? Okay, so it's still loading up here. Now, if we didn't do um, ghost reduction here, the boat would look just a little bit wonky donkey, which uh, we don't want, okay? Now, this has already done a little bit of adjustment, so we look at it before and after. Okay, looking good. I love the clouds. How great are those clouds? Fantastic. Now, here's something to watch out for. If you notice, the water has come out quite gray. Okay, why has it happened? That happens typically with you have a lot of waves in the water. It loses its blueness and it becomes gray because what it's doing is it's kind of averaging together the three frames, which comes out to be a little bit gray. Okay, so let's make a new layer and now we're going to blue up the water a little bit. Okay. Um, we'll go down here at top and bottom adjustment. Let's go to the bottom adjustment and increase or decrease the warmth and that'll make it nice and blue, Ooh, a little too purple there. Tap on the brakes there, tap on the brakes tray. Okay, and let's adjust the shift down a little bit because we want it to be just down there in the water. Okay, cool. Maybe we'll drop the contrast down a little bit too. That'll make the, uh, the water a little smoother. Just a little bit smoother. Let's see if exposure does anything. What if we make it a little bit brighter? I kind of think we want to do that. I think that looks pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um, let's crop this in a little bit. I feel like we've got a little bit too much water. Let's make it more cinematic. So I'm going to click on the skizzers, pull this thing down on top, pull this up from the bottom, and this will give it that um, that more two by one, uh, you know, 70 millimeter epic movie kind of look, which I quite like. I'll tell you one thing that I, I'm not a big fan of in Aurora is cropping because it goes really slow. Basically, it has to rebuild the entire thing from scratch. That's why it's a little bit slow. A lot of times, I will do my final crop in Photoshop uh, just because it's a little bit faster. Sometimes I have to go into Photoshop to do a few final cleanup things. Okay. I think that water's too blue now that I look at it. Okay. It's all right. You can change your mind a little bit. So I'm going to bring that warmth back just a little bit. Awesome. Now let's add a new layer and let's bring a little more HDR to the clouds. They're pretty HDR-ish already. Remember, you can really amp it up, right? If you wanted to, you could go crazy, crazy, but we don't want to do that, okay? We're just going to do it just a little bit. And then softness, yeah, we're going to soften it up a little bit. That looks good. Might be a little bit of noise up there too, so I'm just going to increase that a little bit. All right, now paint in the sky, a little in the mountains as well. Cool. Now, when I'm looking at this, I'm not finding... Oh, okay, I've got a few ideas. Um, do you remember what we did two days ago when we made the mountains taller? We're going to do the same thing here. But before we do that, I would like to add a bit more definition into these hills. Because now I look at these, these green hills look a little bit washed out, don't they? Don't they? Yes. Yes, they do. So I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to make, start making adjustments, but I'm just going to be looking at this area right here where the green is. Okay, so I'll increase the contrast. Good, that makes it, it always makes it a little bit more inky and dark. Okay, it's got a little bit of blue in those trees, right? Well, I don't really like that. So let's go down here to the saturation and let's drop down the blues just a little bit. Yeah, 
Might be a little cyan in there too. There we go, it's looking nice. Um, that's a small little area. Why don't we do a little bit of HDR detail there to see if we can make it pop a little bit more. There we go, and decrease the softness. That makes it a little harder. Cool, okay, I like that. I like that. Let me paint over this part. And now, remember, just I painted over this part, now any adjustments I make will just be right there. So if I wanted to go increase the image radiance there, that looks kind of nice, a little smart colorize. Let's go warm it up just a bit. There we go. There, I like that. Now that part's a little bit more jumpy. Maybe I want to paint that in here as well into that, into these mountains here, give it a little bit more punch. Yeah. All right, looking good. Um, now we'll add one more layer. I know we've got a lot of layers going on here, but just how, just how I'm doing it. Okay, you don't have to do all this stuff, of course. I want to make the water glow a bit more, so I'm going to do some image radiance and maybe cool it off a little bit. A little smart color eyes. There we go. That makes the water seem a lot better. Let's paint over that. I think it's always good to have a little bit of just glowy water. Excellente. Okay, now we're going to export this one um, and then go in there and raise the roof. We're going to make the mountains um, just a little bit bigger. All right. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. Um, this time, we're going to do pretty much what we did last time. We're going to increase the canvas size. Okay. By the way, you can do that with Command Option C or go to File, Canvas Size. Okay, it's currently 17 inches. We're going to make it maybe three more inches. That's about what I do. Anchor it to the bottom so the extra canvas goes on top. Okay. Then I'm going to grab the top bit all the way down to the mountains. Do Command T to transform it and stretch out those mountains. Make them nice and nice and tall. Look at that. Yeah, come on. Come on. That's looking good. Looking good. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna now I'm gonna grab the top part all the way to the top of the mountains. And do a command T and shrink it back down. So we don't need all that extra sky there. We still keep that nice cinematic crop. Pick the crop, pull it down here, and hit enter. Cool, it's a fun little trick, isn't it? Super simple. Um, if you want to look at before and after, uh, this is before where the mountains are kind of shrunk down. Remember, this is a fault of the lens and the camera. We have a wide angle lens here which takes everything in the middle and shrinks it up. If you guys have been here to the Remarkables or seen mountains on your own or seen this effect, you'll know how the mountains just seem kind of small in the final result. Well, no need for that. Uh, just go make them feel as big and powerful as they actually were. All right. Awesome possum, you guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. All right. Thank you, my friends. See you soon.